Hi, good morning everyone. Welcome back to the channel. It's your girl here, Daniela, the planning diva with my baby Daisy the pug. She's actually trying to get off my lap because she wants to go see where her big brother is. Bugs, come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. Oh, now Bugs is joining me. Yay. He got jealous of Daisy on my lap. This is exactly what my morning is like, battling these two pugs. Now Daisy wants to be on my lap. You can see her right here. Daisy! <laughs> you can see her right here. Oh my goodness. Anyways, we're going to be vlogging today. It is February the 24th. It's a Friday. Thank God it's Friday. And thank you so much to all of those of you who watched my last vlog, my desert adventure vlog. I was actually surprised to see how many people watched it and how many people liked it because I tend to see that vlogs don't do as well as like regular content. So just thank you so much for supporting my vlogging content. That really means a lot to me. But we're going to be vlogging today and I'm going to be taking you all to work today. Today's going to be a pretty busy day um, in terms of work. I have to commute up to UC Riverside. I'm in San Diego right now, northern San Diego County, but I'm still in San Diego. I have to commute up to Riverside, um, the University of California, Riverside, which is where I work. It's about an hour away from my house. I have to commute up there today and I have a lot of um, bench work that I have to do. I'm going to be working in the laboratory on the bench with chemicals and and with my lab coat on, some, you know, latex gloves, I'm gonna be, you know, really living my scientist fantasy. So I thought it would be a cool day to vlog and get to show you um, how work is when I have to work on the bench. So I'm gonna get into all of that and, um, and then I'll come back home and, and relax because it's been a really long and exhausting week. Anyways, um, I have to go take the pugs out. I'm gonna go take them out with my boyfriend and then we might hit up the panaderia or the Mexican bread shop to get some breakfast and then I'll probably head out after that. So let's get to it. Okay, we're finally making it out of the house. I just got into my car. Well, it's my boyfriend's car. Um, I actually... We actually switch cars when I'm commuting because he doesn't commute as much as I do. I have a... 62 65 mile drive up to riverside it takes me about an hour without any traffic and about an hour and 15 with traffic and it can be up to like an hour and a half if there's heavy rush hour traffic or if there's an accident on the road so i'm in the prius for today and i have my water filled up my water recurring theme stay hydrated it's about 10.45 right now, pretty late. I usually try to leave at least by 9.30, but honestly, this week I've been exhausted and I've been coming home really late and waking up pretty late. I've been waking up around 8 in the morning, which is very, very late for me. But again, I have been coming home 1 in the morning, midnight, 11 p.m. And so I really just let myself sleep in and have a slow morning today. Sometimes you just got to do it. I'm hoping that this weekend I can reset my sleep schedule and reset my routine and go to sleep early and wake up early. And honestly, I probably should have vlogged a little bit in the morning to give you a little bit of a glimpse into my morning routine and I actually also worked in my planner I actually caught up with my meal planner because I hadn't been working in my meal planner lately but I set up uh, my meal planner I checked in with my fitness planner I looked at my um, flagship planner I probably should have caught that on video because this is a planning channel and I really want to showcase um, my planning routines and when I actually use my planner and how I use it but honestly it is a little bit difficult to set up the like the filming setup that I have um, when I'm filming so that you're looking straight down onto the planner and if I want to show my planner or anything like on my table I really have to hold the camera and it's just not super ideal for me or you for the matter because it's just kind of like a shaky camera angle anyway I need to figure out how to set up um, the overhead filming so that it is pretty easy to set up and a good angle. And honestly, one of the reasons why I am kind of running a little bit uh, behind schedule today is I got caught up designing a sticker. I was working in my meal planner and I really want to make calorie calculator stickers. And my vision for these calorie calculator stickers is um, they're just going to be like a stat driven sticker, of course, a stat driven sticker where I'm keeping track of how many calories I'm eating, how many calories I'm burning, which is a metric I get from my Fitbit. 
and the total calorie gain or loss. So I got caught up, um, <laughs> I need to turn my car back on. I got caught up um, designing that sticker and I just uh, sketched it out, I inked it, and I started filling in um, some colors. It's kind of plain right now, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I think it could use with some more decorative elements, some more colors, but uh, I think I'll hold off on, until I design like the second version of it. I feel like my stickers right now, a lot of them, most of them honestly, are just kind of the first prototypes of what I imagine like the final finished product to be. But I still want to use them and you know make them available. I am willing to sell them as well. But I do feel like they're a little bit, you know, diamond in the rough status right now. Anyway, we're gonna um, start heading our way up to UC Riverside. It does take me, um, at this point of the day, it'll probably take me an hour and 10 minutes to get there. So I usually just listen to audiobooks, listen to podcasts. Um, sometimes I'll listen to music, mostly audiobooks and podcasts though. And, um, and I drive all the way up to University of California Riverside. So I'm gonna um, let you all go focus on driving, focus on the road here. And um, I'll flip the camera around so you can see a little bit of my commute because it is a, a pretty gorgeous commute, I have to say. It is, it is beautiful. We do get a lot of um, views of the mountains. Um, Riverside is pretty close to some of the larger mountain ranges and so it is, it is pretty cool. And this time of the year, they're snow capped as well because um, we've been getting so much rain. So um, we'll just turn it around and I'll play some nice relaxing music and I'll take you along to work with me. All right, see you in a bit.
Okay, I just parked um, about a mile from campus. It's just a typical university campus where unless you pay for parking, you have to park a mile off campus and then walk to your building. And honestly, for me, I'm just such a cheapskate. I don't like paying for parking. I'd rather spend that money on stickers and planners. Plus, it's good for me to walk, right? So that's how I justify it. But I'm not gonna lie, it is a little bit annoying to have to walk a mile to your building every single day. I mean, it's a nice walk. It's And it's through campus, so it's not like you know a terrible walk but um i am gonna start walking to campus and it is currently 11 54 so it took me about an hour and 10 minutes um to drive here anyways um let me get my stuff together and then we can start walking to campus so i just found some street parking just like any university campus um there's a street near campus that everyone parks at and you can see here all the cars that park on the street so i just park alongside them and then I make my way through campus. I'm kind of on the edge of campus right now so I'm gonna walk through campus um, to my building which is the entomology building. Okay, we're coming up on my building here, the building of entomology. Um, we're right next to the building of medicine and research. The school of medicine research building, right across from that. And honestly, I probably should have uh, come in from the front side of the building. This is the back of the building, but it's just more convenient for me um, based on where I was coming from, where I had parked to enter through the back side. And then my office is actually the small office here on the side, right here, um, Office 261. So let me pull out my keys and unlock the door. Okay, so this is my small and humble office. This room was actually kind of like a storage room in the lab before I came in. So there's actually still quite a bit of boxes on the shelves. Um, it was an empty office and they were using it as storage space. And so when I came in, um, I cleared out a bunch of stuff here, but we still have uh, mostly this side so I could set up my office, but we still have a bunch of lab equipment in some of the cabinets here and I'm slowly working my way through it. But basically this small room um, leads out into the hallway. I'm standing at the door that leads out into the hallway and then this door over here leads out into the lab, which I will give you a tour um, in a second, but that is the lab right now. I'm going to be doing quite a bit of bench work today, so I'll be there. I'll show you around. So that door leads into the lab. This bench over here is an empty bench. I have a printer here and we have storage up on here. But honestly, I don't really have a need for this space, so I just have left it there. We have a computer over there. I just put my laptop down, which I will bust out in a second. Put my coat and my backpack here on this chair. And I'm mostly on this side of the office here and I use these drawers. This is my, um, my sitting ball. I like to sit on this ball when I'm working on my computer. And I brought in quite a bit of things from home. I brought in some lamps, um, my whiteboard, a tea set, my monitor, a tea kettle. I have a cork board over here, a painting that I made, my tea set over there. Um, I have both my degrees here. This is my bachelor's degree from Williams College and my doctorate from University of California, San Diego. I have all my field guides up here. I have a cute little lamp up there. I have a bunch of mugs up here because I have way too many mugs to keep at home. And so I bring some here to the office and then up here I have my older art books and some of my older planners up there. 
and I just have some cute little string lights. And also this hanging thing here that I got at Goodwill and my little Winnie the Pooh wall hanging as well. Um, pretty cozy and it's just a good workspace for me. And um, let me set up my laptop real quick. Okay, I've set up my laptop. That's what my desk situation looks like when I'm working. <laughs> I actually have a video open here. I was watching this at home. I was starting to watch this. This is um, Cecilia from Creatively Gracious. I was watching her um, wellness and fitness planner um, uh, plan with me and I'm so so curious about how she's using this recovery layout for fitness and wellness. Cecilia, this is genius. You're a genius. I can't wait to finish this video but <laughs> I had to run out the door this morning so I should probably um, <laughs> close this and get back to work. Let me close some of these windows here. Check out my data. <laughs> Oh, and something that I think would be cool to show you all is this. This is my work planner, and sometimes I leave it in the office, and sometimes I bring it home. Um, I left it in the office this time around, and this hard cover right here is actually from the Home Life. No, the Work Life. The Work Life. Um, collection from the happy planner and when this first came out i was not really interested in any of the products because i feel like they're pretty simple and plain and i like bright and loud but i found this planner it's the big size at my local thrift store for like two dollars and so it had the entire like it was the entire planner it had the hardcover and the planner guts inside and so what i did was i took out the planner guts and then i put in my work planner which right now i'm using the big cozy critter planner um franken planned with the paula and the waffle planner and this is my style, like the bright, the whimsical, the fun. So this is my um, work planner. Oh, and I just added these stickers here. This is my B sticker and my pink kawaii concha sticker. I love how these turned out. But um, yeah, this is just my work planner. It's very, very simple. I don't decorate it too much. I honestly kind of decorate it as I go along. Like I'll decorate it Monday morning. I'll just throw down some stickers. Literally takes me like five minutes. But mostly I will add stickers and add, you know, events as they occur, um, as the days go on. I don't really spend too much time decorating this planner. This was the first week of the year. Obviously I wasn't in here because this is my work planner, so I was not at work. This is the week I had COVID, so I didn't have anything going on there. And this is a very typical spread of my work planner. It's kind of haphazard. There's a lot of writing, a lot of to-do lists, a lot of check marks. Um, it's not super pretty, but it is really, really functional. And I think it's fun to have stickers, so it works for me. This week I didn't really have too much going on this last half of the week. And then I have just like notes from a talk I went to there. And this is the February monthly. Again, pretty, pretty simple. I like highly decorated planners for my work planner because um, the decoration that's already there allows me to just kind of skate by with having less decoration. Um, this week I had a lot going on and actually I had a lot of notes that I was writing. This week I actually wasn't in my planner too much. And then this is the week I really started being a little bit more intentional and mindful with my stickers. I decided that I was going to grab one sticker book and then just use that sticker book for my work planner. So this week was the Colorful Leopard. And then this is the current week here and I was using um, Color Story actually. Well, I actually have it right here. Yeah, so th it was this book and I was using these stickers from the indigo section because honestly, um, I only need one blue spread a year in my planner. I don't really like blue. But look how much, um, how many stickers I've used from the sticker book. I've used up like two sections completely. I've almost finished this section here. The only reason I haven't really done too much more in this section is because a lot of these stickers are seasonal and so I'm kind of waiting for different seasons to come up to use these. And then I am right now focusing on using up the indigo stickers. And then I think next week I'll start using the pressed floral stickers. But I'm almost finished with the sticker book, I feel. So that is my work planner. And I also have um, another planner in here as well, my teaching planner. So the, um, the planner I just showed you with the cozy critters, that is like my research planner, like my scientific work. And then this planner here, um, which is the Paul and Waffle planner. It's a dashboard with these super cute dividers. This is my teaching planner. 
And right now I've been kind of um, just barely starting up teaching again. I actually teach as part of the prison education project and I'm also setting up a program to teach in the local juvenile detention facility. So right now it's less teaching and more like um, program initiation, program development. But I am starting to teach with the prison education project as a virtual teacher um, starting next week. So um, we're starting to see a lot more things in my teaching planner right now and things are going to get really busy for me. Anyway, I actually have a meeting that I'm late to that I need to hop on to Zoom for. So I need to do that. And actually, I might introduce you to um, the collaborator I'm working with. I'm trying to like do planner interviews and ask people about their different planning styles as part of these vlogs. So I think that would be fun. So let me hop onto the Zoom and then I will introduce you in a second. All right, so Chris and I just wrapped up our meeting. We have our weekly Honeybee Bioinformatics meeting um, and it's always a good time. We always learn a lot, have a lot of good laughs and Chris kindly agreed to be part of my vlog and to be subjected to a planner interview. <laughs> Thank you Chris for being part of this vlog. But yeah, um, could you please just introduce yourself a little bit and um, tell people yeah. who you are and what you're doing here? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, well, thank you for having me on your channel. It's uh, fun to be interviewed every now and then. So uh, like Daniela said, my name is Chris and I am a graduate student in the entomology department at the University of California, Riverside. I study honeybees and um, their reproductive biology. So uh, I am looking into like different breeding practices with honeybees, which yeah. is not talked about too much. Yeah. So maybe some people are thinking that uh, bee breeding sounds weird, but just like other livestock animals, it's an important part of our agricultural industry. So. Yeah. We can talk more about that later. <laughs> Absolutely. And it's great to, to be working with honeybees with you because right now I'm working on ants. And so it's nice to like go back to my honeybee roots. But because this is yeah. a planner channel, Chris, um, I thought it'd be really cool to do a planner interview with you. So I have three questions. Um, my mm -hmm. first question is, uh, how would you describe your planning style and organization of your day-to-day -day life? So, um, admittedly, I am not much of a planner user. I have to confess that I, you know, went to the store recently and I was like, I'm going to buy a planner because I want to be more organized. And I didn't because I was intimidated by what the right option was. I wanted a planner that I felt like, you know, had like my kind of whole week right there, mm -hmm. you know, on one page and then like maybe a full calendar. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But I was not finding very good options mm -hmm. available. So I was like, nope, I'm just going to skip out on that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But like in terms of just like my organization, I um, like to keep my files contained to just like online. I don't really like to keep like loose paper. So um, I try to keep very organized like folders on my computer um, so that I know where everything is located, essentially. Keeping good like name tracking of files mm. is essential. I see, interesting. Yeah, yeah, there's so many options for planners. I didn't realize until I was part of the planner community like how much is actually out there. And like you have like passion planner, like what I have. I also have happy planner, which is like my work planner that I showed you, um, which is mm -hmm. my favorite. I'm gonna have to get you a planner. I'm gonna have to find a planner for you to try out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Cause like maybe there's not good sources like at the store right. if you're just going, but like maybe there's right. better stuff online oh, absolutely. for planners. Absolutely. And also Michael's and Joanne's are huge mm -hmm. planner stores. Like they have tons of planners mm -hmm. in them, which is like you would not you would not expect that because you think it's like an art and craft store, but mm -hmm. they're like huge planner stores. But I'm definitely have to get you a planner. I'm that person in people's life that always gives people planners, you know, that. <laughs> so, 
Yeah, but also like you're showing me with those planners that it is an artistic experience. Mm -hmm. And so it makes sense that you would find them at Joann's or Michael's for yeah, sure. Absolutely, absolutely. Okay, so my second question, Chris, is what are you currently using then to plan your time and your life? Well, I am currently, I rely on Google Calendar a lot for like meeting reminders, but honestly, I find myself like double booking myself mm -hmm. a lot mm -hmm. or um, just not having great, you know, a good hold on how to plan <laughs> out my day to day. So hence why I'm searching for a planner. Um, uh -huh. But one thing I like to do is just kind of like um, keep like a whiteboard with me mm -hmm. and write down like my little tasks for the week on the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And so for me, if I create like a list like that, mm -hmm. then I know the things I've got to knock out and I don't give myself an order mm -hmm. of how to knock them out because then it's not like encouraging if I'm like, oh, I have to do this one before mm -hmm. the next task. I'm like, just get whatever you can done on the list. Uh -huh. And then the beautiful, magical, uh -huh. just like erase uh -huh. that task <laughs> that was on that list. That's the rewarding part, you uh -huh. know, to see okay. Yeah. Uh, this like list that I created at yeah. the beginning of the week, just like dwindling mm. down over time. Interesting. So, Interesting. Yeah. That's super cool. It's so cool to hear like how people, like how they manage their productivity and their, like their pro project management as well. I have a whiteboard too, and I love my whiteboard as well. I have one here in the office and one at home. And I also like, um, like seeing, I use it more, not as to like w cross things off or like erase things, but more mm -hmm. to like plan out my hours. Mm -hmm. Um, so I use it a little bit differently, but I also just, I love whiteboards a lot. Cool. It's super cool. I Google calendar is also really solid too. I think honestly, that was my first planner experience was Google calendar. Um, and then, and then I quickly mm -hmm. realized that like, I like the paper planning a lot. Uh, cool. All right, Chris. So my last question yeah. for you before I let you go to return to your work um, is um, what are some um, routines or habits that you really try to stay consistent with and that really help you remain like productive um, in your life? Yeah. So I feel like the whiteboard one probably like falls into this category as well. Just like, um, doing the whiteboard it's important to kind of set your day that you maybe plan that all out right and mm -hmm. just get that going and have that into your routine so mm -hmm. it's like a functioning thing it's like constantly a list of to do stuff that is mm -hmm. uh you know just being updated um mm -hmm. so the due diligence there but then i also love to keep reminders on my phone mm -hmm about like just little things that I might need to do. Mm. Um, like appointments are a huge one for me, like yeah. a doctor's appointment or something like that. Mm. I like to have my uh, reminder set. Mm -hmm. um, and I will set the reminder sometimes like the night before, mm. like at 9 p.m. Mm. So I'll see a reminder then. So I'm like mentally prepping myself mm. like, okay, I've got this coming up tomorrow. Mm. Then. I'll have another one for like 15 minutes before that actual meeting on the day of, mm. which I find helpful to just organize yeah. myself. Mm. Okay, yeah, it's a really good idea to um, have set that reminder for the night before because I totally have been there where I wake up and I just realize that something is happening like 10 minutes mm -hmm. before it's happening or 10 minutes after it's already happened. Yeah. <laughs> or like, yeah, sometimes like you have those really early meetings too. Mm -hmm. And so it's good to like set that reminder for the night before just right. so like I'm setting my like alarms for the morning mm -hmm. at like a good time to just like set myself up. And I think right. that's a big one too. It's like, I just like to, I think my productivity is always more efficient when I have like a great morning routine mm. that I just have well set in place, mm. you know, because mm -hmm. I'm not much of a morning person. <laughs> so I have to wake up, I have to drink my coffee and like, you know, just kind of like 
during my morning routine, I'm setting those intentions and thinking about what I'm going to do throughout the day, you know, going through my schedule. Yeah, so. absolutely. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh, could you share a little bit about your morning routine and like how, what exactly you do in your morning routine and what are like some things in your morning routine that you just absolutely feel like you have to do? Because I'm, I'm obsessed with morning routines and mm -hmm. I'm trying to really like find the perfect morning routine for myself. So I'm like all ears to listen to other people's like what do you find beneficial in their morning routines? Well, so... I think my morning routine differs if I'm working at home yeah. versus if I'm going to school because yeah. I think, well, school slash work. So mm -hmm. if it's one of those mornings, I'm just kind of like getting out the door, mm -hmm. but I have a long commute. So then I'm able to maybe think about my intentions for the day <laughs> or like what I am wanting to do mm -hmm. during that car ride. Yeah. Whereas like, I don't take myself too seriously in the mornings when I am uh you know working from home mm -hmm. i try to be like a little more relaxed about it just kind of mm -hmm. you know getting like like i said my coffee going yeah. but then i'll talk to my partner a lot and just kind of talk about like mm -hmm. you know randomness of from like you know maybe dreams i had or something <laughs> just kind yeah. of i think that's the key for me is to not take my mm -hmm. work at home overly serious mm -hmm. and just kind of uh, able to relax and refresh and open the mind up so that I'm able to then go into work mode. I see. Interesting. Okay. Wow. Yeah. It's super important to remember is to like not always be like, you know, focused on work or productivity or like it's important to really just relax and let loose and unwind for sure. Aww. Yeah. And like making sure that I have time to just like, you know, I feel like there are times where I'm going so much in my life that I'm like, oh man, I don't even have time to like shave my face this morning. I'm just <laughs> got to get out the door. But I think it's important to like do those little things yeah. that like make you feel refreshed. Otherwise you don't feel like you're resetting yourself and like recharging in order to be productive. Yeah, absolutely. I feel you 100%. I feel like it's been weeks since I've like done my makeup and I'm someone that loves doing my makeup and so I haven't done it in a while and I just it's like you know you get into those moments where it's like you know you're living day by day and, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then I'm definitely in there right just now just like surviving right you now, know in survival mode Ah, well thank you so much Chris for um you know agreeing to this planner interview I really appreciate it and um yeah thank you yeah of course thank you okay I'm right about to head into lab now, but I just wanted to sit here for a second and finish my coffee. And I thought it'd be a good idea to just take a moment to explain what I'm gonna be doing on the bench today. Today, I'm gonna be doing RNA extractions. So it is gonna be an exercise in classic molecular biology bench work, which is nice. I don't get to be on the bench as much as I used to nowadays. I would say most of my work is computational. It's mostly bioinformatic. I'm mostly working on the terminal, programming. But usually when I start a project, like I'm starting one right now, I usually get to spend a couple of days on the bench. And it is fun, I would say. When I first started as a biologist, it was definitely what I was interested in the most. Anyway, I'm gonna be doing RNA extractions. And RNA extractions, so RNA stands for ribonucleic acid. It's very similar to DNA, which stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. They're both um, nucleic acids that carry information. So I'm extracting RNA from ants because right now I'm working on an ant genetics project. I'm trying to understand how genetics influence how ants form their colonies. Ants are really, really interesting. When they form their colonies, they sometimes form colonies with just one queen, and sometimes they form colonies with up to dozens or even hundreds of queens. This was really interesting to me when I first started on this project because I come from the honeybee world in which honeybees only have one queen. And so it was super fascinating to see um, other social insects have more than one queen. But in certain species of ants, um, whether a colony has one queen versus hundreds of queens, that's genetically determined. And in fact, it's determined by one single gene. This gene is known as the super gene because it is massive. And, and honestly, super genes are just kind of like collections of hundreds of genes. 
but because they're fused together, they act as one gene, and so people just kind of call them super genes. So I'm about done with my coffee here, um, so let's get into lab. Okay, we're done with the extractions and I am exhausted. I only have two brain cells working right now, so you're gonna have to forgive me if I'm stumbling over my words. I promised I would show the fluorometer where I'm quantifying the DNA, I mean the RNA, but honestly, at the end of the extraction, I was so exhausted and I was also so bummed out about um, the extract, the uh, quantification of the RNA. Like I went ahead and I used the fluorometer and I quantified the RNA and I was about 50% successful, half of my samples were fine, the other half the extraction failed. Once I use the sample to extract RNA from it, I can't use that sample again, that sample is lost, and so if, I, if the extraction fails, then that sample is gone. And so it's kind of high pressure because I don't want to lose samples, these samples were of ants collected throughout Europe, and so I really don't want to lose those samples because someone is going to have to go back to Europe to collect ants if I mess up this project. Anyways, I think I'm going to pack up now and um, head to my car. Okay, so I think we're ready to go now. I have everything packed up and yeah, I'm just going to walk back to my car. I think it's raining right now, so I have my umbrella. Hopefully I don't get too wet. I'm going to walk back to my car and drive home. And I think me and my boyfriend wanted to go out for sushi tonight just to kind of decompress and um, try to relax a little bit and have some fun. But I probably won't vlog anymore until we get home because I'm tired. <laughs> so I'll see you in a bit. Bye. Hi, good morning, everyone. Happy Saturday. Thank God it's the weekend. Ugh, I really needed that long, long night of sleep. I think the last thing that I filmed was I was in my office and I was heading to walk to my car and then to drive home and then I was gonna have dinner with Steven. So I did do all that. I walked to my car, I drove all the way home, which is an hour and 10 minutes. And then we went out to dinner. We went out to a sushi place, a new sushi place we both hadn't been to here um, locally. And it was fun. It was good. I would definitely would go back to it. I got my sushi fix. I was really in the mood for a sushi roll and so I got that. I said I was going to come back and start vlogging again when I got home but I was so exhausted by the time I got home that I really had no energy. I had no energy and I just had no energy to close the vlog yesterday and so I'm closing it today in the morning now that I feel good and it's just gonna be a slow lazy day for me. It's pouring outside right now. It's raining here in Southern California and it's going to be raining all weekend, so we're just going to be all cozy inside this weekend. Let me know what you're up to this weekend. I'm going to definitely try to film some videos for the channel um, for this coming week and do chores. I might read some, I might draw some. Definitely a lot of planner time, so we're going to have a lot of fun this weekend. All right, everyone, take care. Bye!